right, viewers, don't be worried. We got another episode of Gassy Radio coming up. You probably weren't worried till I just said that, but it's it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll have some good stuff for you. Because, before our episode kicks off, we have a nice word from our sponsor. And our sponsor this week is... Darren Marlin. <laughs> Darren Marlin. Mar- oh, I'm God. keeping that in. Darren Marlin. <laughs> Darren Marlin is our sponsor for this week. Oh, God. You might know him as a professional voiceover artist. I know him as a friend, a brother, and a really great actor who's brought a couple awards to some of my independent films, and he's won them for his acting abilities. He's a great guy. He is. And, um, he definitely know. is, and I'm just a jerk that can't say names, and I'm so, sorry, Darren. So, uh, <laughs> here's a word from our very own, the guy who even does the intro and outro for us for Gansy. Yes. Uh, uh, here we go with Darren Marlin. <laughs> Darren Marlin. <laughs> Ghosts, demons, aliens, the unexplained, the paranormal, stories of the weird and the dark, submitted by authors and fans, Weird Darkness. Celebrities, politicians, criminals. Oh, wait, I already said celebrities and politicians, didn't I? True stories of individuals and moments of duh. The Daily Dose of Weird News, every weekday on YouTube at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. Warning this podcast may contain Sorry. explicit language. <laughs> And maybe some other sexual things. <laughs> Your discretion is advised. Welcome to uh, uh, Gassy Radio, your home for gaming, anime, superhero news, and entertainment. Waft in and listen. Here are your hosts, Randy and Luigi. Excuse me. And welcome to another exciting Gassy Radio, and thank you again, Dar- Darren Marler. <laughs> this time, I can't even fucking this talk time today. You, this time you didn't say Darren right. <laughs> Oh my, god. oh my god, this is fucking great. It's been a long fucking weekend for us. I'm still <laughs> tired. Thank you again, Darren Marlar. For... <laughs> I'm fucking dying. Oh I'm god. crying. Oh my god. Oh. Thank you again for for sponsoring us and your beautiful plug it uh your beautiful intro and outro. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Somebody please punch me in the face right now. I just can't. Darren does the intro and outro for us, and we always plug him, but now he's a sponsor, so we don't have to do the whole www.marlarhouse.com. Because right. you saw his little video that uh, that just played. Or... His YouTube is right. youtube.com slash marlarsheet. But uh, anyway, oh uh, this is one of the rare episodes where we have the uh, current convention segment in our episode. Besides this... the fact that we're slap happy as shit. Yeah. And this is the, one of the good ones because... This current convention actually was recorded at the convention this past weekend, the Quad Cities Mighty Con, and this is actually a convention Luigi and I work for. So take a listen. Your feet are tired because you're walking around all fucking day. It's current conventions. Yes. All right, so we're here live right now recording this actually at Quad Cities Mighty Con Day 2. Oh, this is, it's been a, a crazy weekend, let me tell you. Breezy, rainy, crazy, hot, insane weekend. We actually have yes. customers come in left and right. It's been a great, great oh, show. Man. So uh, what do you think of day one? That was yesterday. Day one was a really great show. We had like over 800 people, I think. You know what I mean? We had about 800 people, maybe yeah. more. It, yeah. um, it was it was a really good show, man. Uh, just really yeah, cause, busy. Yeah, because this current convention's little segment we're doing... We're actually not just going to one. We actually work for MightyCon. I work for Geek right. Inc. And we run this. And I'm the vendor coordinator. And you get to make the sausage and not just eat the sausage with this type of one. Yeah. This one, 
I, th I haven't heard a single complaint from a single vendor so far. Like, they've all said that this is one of the best days they've ever had at a show. It's been it's been nothing but awesomeness this weekend. As you can still, if you're listening, we're still live here at day two. The people running and hustling and bustling in the background. You can hear them behind us. That's the beauty. That's right. the beauty of having that, actually being at the convention. So, uh, yesterday, it was... Um, it was a rush of people for about a good four hours. It was just straight, continuously uh, selling tickets. Um, I like what we have here as far as vendors, though. Like, we have a, a great selection of comics. Uh, there's manga here. That We've got a uh, pop figure booth. There's actually some good Power Ranger deals here. Right. I, I Literally, right now, there's a vendor sitting behind me walking into his little booth area. It's like walking into the past. It's there's a... Uh, Great artists like Jeff Balke here, Mr. Frank Fosco, a bunch of other local and non-local artists that if you, you need to come to some of these shows to actually see the awesome stuff they're doing for sure. Luigi, 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 tell them about your um, your figure dilemma. What happened? Oh my God! Yesterday, day one, you wanted something very yeah. cool to you, and then today, eh, it didn't really work out. What happened? I'm a huge Naruto fan. Uh, I know that there's a lot of you guys out there. But I went over to one of the, one of our booths, and um, and I found this really cool. It was like one of the more um, one of the figures that you would normally pose, not like an actual like action figure. But I found a Naruto, and I found a Sasuke. I was gonna pick them both up, and I walked over to the booth today. Somebody picked it up five minutes before I got there. It was I was ready to cry. About like an hour ish after we opened for day two, I go over there. And I literally see the Naruto being sold in front of my eyes, and I knew Luigi wanted it. And I'm just like, oh my god, oh my god. So I went and told him. Yep. And he, heartbroken, he cried and went and uh, did some stuff in the corner that he's not proud of. Who are you to say that I wasn't proud of it? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you were proud of what you did in the corner? Very. All right. Did you clean up after yourself? What do you think I did in the corner? Nothing gross, <laughs> nothing gross, nothing gross. He just uh, pooped and sneezed and cried everywhere. Yeah, I, I was like a mess. I should have probably had a diaper on. I was acting like a child, but that's okay. <laughs> no, it's all right. We'll find no, him under real yeah. here somewhere. Yeah, there's got to be something You did somewhere. get a cool Sasuke, though. I did definitely get the Sasuke because I was like, if if the Naruto sold, the Sasuke is definitely going to sell, too. And I'm, I'm surprised it was the Naruto that sold over the Sasuke because Sasuke is a more popular figure. Right, that makes total sense. And uh, from that same guy, I got the Legacy Falcon Zord at a really good price. Instead of 65 70 bucks, I only got it for 30 Yeah. These guys over here make such great deals with everybody. They're very nice. They're, they, they'll work with whatever your budget is. It's This is just the, one of the best environments that I've ever been to for any kind of con. Oh, yeah. 100%. And that's what MightyCon does. It makes the shows cheaper for artists and vendors to set up, cheaper for people to get in. That way more money and happiness can be spent and found at the shows. Yeah, it's not like Wizard World and ASIN and Comic-Con. It's not like those bigger ones where even at the end of the fucking day and you got 60 figures left, and you're we, not going to... we couldn't get those gold Not going to budge a cent on your... And Goku's... <laughs> I was very disappointing at C2E2. It was a couple podcasts back. I was so pissed no, off that the guy wouldn't even make a deal. I remember that. I remember that. Son of a bitch. <laughs> but uh, that's that's why I like coming here. And I, I feel like everybody should come down here at least once to at least one Mighty Con. And at the time of recording, at the time of recording this, this is day two, Sunday, six five of Quad Cities Mighty Con, uh, and just two weeks from now. Uh, the 18th and 19th of June, the 18th and 19th of June is the St. Louis Mighty Con, and we're going to be doing some podcasting there, too, and updating. Um, what else happened? Day one, uh, the adult costume contest, uh, Ryu, Ryu won, got the crowd choice. Um, the winner was a Ghostbuster of the adult costume contest yesterday. Oh, he showed back up, and he was asking uh, where we found the State Puff Marshmallow Man that we have set, sitting outside the uh, doors. Yeah, that's, uh, they actually sell those at Walmart and Toys R Us, so I mean, it's, it's pretty good. And um, so he won, there was Poison Ivy and Harley, we did the, at 1 p.m. we had the children, uh, courtesy of uh, Circuits and Sewing Needles There were a lot of Harleys, company. though. A Curtis lot of Harleys. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, courtesy of 
circuits and sewing needles, they walked around. Right, right there. You know, they walk around with all the kids so no one feels like they're left out or winter. It's just, it's, it's been a great time. Nothing bad has happened. We got Factory of Fear right across from us where we're walk, looking right now. Of course, and the legendary Frank Fosco is right across from us, the Ninja Turtle. All, like, if you don't know who Frank Fosco is, I'm going to fucking hit you with a hammer. Factory of Fear is right past us. I mean, and this is definitely a unique show, man. Like, nothing yeah. bad has happened, which is the great thing. And that's what we care about most is no right. bloodshed, violence, or asshole vendors or well, artists. That is part of our job is to take the headaches for our artists and vendors. And we even haven't had too many headaches. We've had a couple of mishaps, but... We fix things pretty smoothly around here, so oh, yeah, and... I mean this is this has been one of the better shows that I've been to. I know Madison was our best show before this one. Right. I, I haven't seen a better show. Well, Milwaukee was definitely Well, the I'm just best talking show. about like how smooth it ran. Oh yeah. yeah. You're good. But uh, yeah, we're uh, sitting here right now. Uh, Friday, Luigi and I set up all the tables, minus a few that Bill set up, but we set up all the chairs, oh, yeah. got everything going. Saturday, we worked all day. Sunday, we're working all day, but we're having fun. Today is more oh, or less yeah. the shopping day. Yeah, this uh, is for us to have fun, do some shopping. Actually, have nice surprises for Madison and Luigi and everybody for later. So yeah, it's, it's, it's great to. It's always fun, and you always find something like you like at Comic Con. Oh, definitely. And I was even talking to Bill last night. He he specifically makes sure that he has a little bit of everything, so anybody that comes down here and anybody that wants to come down here will have a little something to find. Yeah, no one's thrown off to the side and like, well, I don't have anything here that I like. That's not how we find our vendors and artists. I got my daughter Maddie here. My wife Amber. You want to say hi? You want to say hi? You want to say hi? Well, they're being shy. Say hi. Say hello. Say hi. Hi. She's being she's being extremely shy. <laughs> Kid won't talk, but yeah, it's just it's a great show, and we'll probably do one final update at the end of the day. And you know, it's just yeah, this is a great convention as always. Yeah, and like I said, this is like by far the best and smoothest I've ever seen. Oh yeah, it's, and. 100 percent agree with you on that with all those aspects for sure we don't we wouldn't we didn't my food had a bad case of the munchies <laughs> <laughs> all right so it's the end of day two and luigi got his little surprise of the naruto and his anus and i got yeah the uh, guy that d bought it five minutes before i walked up was randy <laughs> yes and i got uh so what else did you get this why we're wrapping up this current convention. I did get a couple Transformers, and they've been like good luck charms like this entire weekend. It's been great. Um, I got, uh, Randy also got me a sketch of Deadpool as Green Lantern, and I will be taking a photo of this and putting it up on Facebook and Gassy. Um, it's Deadpool as Green Lantern eating tacos, and I don't remember what he says. And, the, and the top part of it is a bong. Holy shit, I didn't even realize that, and that is beautiful. Yes. And he said that he's going to put a little background to it. He's, it's still a work in progress, but he's going to put a little background to it. I'm getting the original and the actual full finished product. Oh, so that is both. awesome, dude. And then we'll be able to put that. That'll be our first gassy poster. Right. Is the original, and then I'll take the photocopy home and, oh, and that's hang sick. that one Hell up. Hell yeah. And that'll be great. Hell yeah. Um, we got, uh, I, I got the Legacy Falcon Zord and the Legacy... Power Rangers the movie White Ranger Morpher because recently like a couple days ago it'll be here at, it'll be at my house Tuesday or Wednesday I am getting I got the original Legacy Morpher that comes with the five regular Rangers red blue yellow pink black power coins and I have to get the White Ranger slash Green Ranger one but here I got the White Ranger movie one and they're they're being they're being crafty with it uh, the red blue and pink just came out and you have to buy them separately yeah, and I just have to say, how stupid is that? All you're changing is literally the the buckle part that would fit on your belt buckle. On you're your changing pants. the color. Like, why couldn't you just right? Your people will buy it because the morpher is the updated morpher for the movie from back when we were kids, and they're buying it because it comes with the ninja power coin. So with the white ranger morpher, it has the specific white ranger in it, like the white ranger around it, not silver or gold. And then it has the Tiger Zord, like in the beginning of the movie, power coin. Then it has the Falcon Zord power coin, the Falcon Zord coin from the end of the movie. And instead, they, they should have just released the Ninja coins, one morpher with switchable color plates. But 
they're going the more in charge like a hundred bucks for it, but now you have to spend like fifty, sixty on all the all six colored Rangers things. I mean, I'm gonna end up getting them, which I mean, we're is suckers, sm- but still, right? That's smart on their part, but that really fucks everybody else over. Like you said, they should have just... Because people are going to like, right. why did I get the five with this one? Why couldn't I get the five with this one? Right. What they should have done is they should have released a legacy White Ranger Morpher because you know everybody's going to want it, and then slowly but surely released the coins with the the back belt buckle. That's Right. And they could have pro- they could have easily made at least $10, $15 on each one, and that would have been great for them and for us, but no, they had to go... We're going to give it to you, and we're going to give it to you hard in your anus. And that's what they did. Right. Uh, But anyway, we've still got some good finds, and it's wrapping up. And the Quad City Mighty Con first year, the inaugural show has been awesome. I mean, it's been so good that we've actually had people coming in telling us that they've heard heard about us through the news, uh, through family, through friends. Radio stations. Right, just passing by, they see it and go, oh, hey, let's let's go take a look. And everybody's been loving it so far. Yeah, so uh, this will end our current convention segment and back to the regu- the regularly scheduled podcast such a great con oh uh, it was it was amazing we had a great time we got some we got some good shit as we told you before it was it was really nice oh and, but yeah let's kick off our uh, regular episode now with uh well it's not a regular episode it's an awesome crazy sponsored convention episode but let's kick it off with the gaming pass me a controlling grab that beer it's game time Okay, well, before we get into some new topics, let's just brush back up. Pokemon Go is coming out this fall. Matter of oh, fact, yeah. actually, a new little micro uh, teaser just premiered. Yeah. And uh, what the f- what the hell was it about? Um, it was teasing Mega Evolution. Oh, really? Right. It oh, was... that's 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 really cool because. I mean, we we really don't we didn't see any of that in the first series, and I do like the Mega Evolutions a lot, but I'm just excited for the hundred. We're just doing the 150. That's what I like, and I'm still just wondering, are they gonna give us free Pokeballs every day, or are we still gonna sit, have to sit down and fucking buy them? I do like it's just like almost it's a free to play game, but like a free to play game, you all you're gonna like the Simpsons one right. that was out. I spent so much fucking money. Buying the micro transaction. South Park did a whole episode on. Oh, that's funny. Uh, an, an ex coworker of mine was playing that game, and for whatever reason, uh, this shit's they, addicting. They kicked him out of it Ooh. and made him restart the entire thing. He's like, yeah, yeah, because you have to sign in to like their gaming right. server. But if you don't remember your shit, and sometimes it does fuck up. Right. All that money you. spent spent your hard he fucking called money. him up he right. called him up and he's like oh hell no i spent over 120 dollars on mm-hmm. this game he's like i want all my shit back blah 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 and they're like okay so then they gave they literally gave him all the donuts to get him back to where he he needed to be plus what he had and they gave him all the coins to get back to where he was plus what he had well good they made it yeah right, so good, yeah good, good. i mean i i like to hear that that those microtransaction games aren't just like fuck off no you're gonna have to restart the game and you're gonna have to no they're just like you know what you're right you spent this cold hard cash on this game and it's supposed to transfer if it's not we're gonna help you out that's i wish they did that like my similar dilemma when i i had i read my original 2ds i bought smash brothers for it on there and gamestop instead of being like you know what we, we can check and get you a hard copy from a GameStop around the area. They literally just said, yeah, we don't have any, but you can just get the digital one. So I was like, okay, I really wanted the game. So I got the digital one. Flash forward like a year or two, I bought my new 2DS, and there's no way for me to get it back. Right. I mean, like I said, dude, try to contact um, Yeah, the one guy at GameStop Nintendo. told me the way to do all these steps. It shouldn't be that fucking hard. No. Like, like I said, just bold. call up Nintendo. Nintendo should be able to just be like, all right, you paid for the game before. It's in a record somewhere, blah, blah, you blah. You have proof that you paid from GameStop. You still have the receipt from GameStop. Right. So we can just give you a new one. It's not like it's not like a free fucking download code right. that hurt them, Nintendo. And see, that's what I want more out of our, our gaming customer service is for the not... Because obviously they don't want to give free shit away, so customers obviously have to be honest, but... I like the fact that they actually help us out, and they're just not, like, pissed off. You're going to go buy more shit, so this way we can get more money in our pockets. They... I, I wish we had a little bit more of that with the gaming community. We don't have as much of that anymore. 
the hell were we even talking about? What was the name of that Simpsons game? Because I... It was... It was uh, fun. Like, I think it was the Simpsons it. game. Like, the mobile... It was literally called the Simpsons game, and it was mobile. Cause that shit was so fun. I got past or, Krusty Land, and they had all, like, every holiday, they would have that new... The new right. expansions out and shit. Right. Because um, it, it was just like, um... My my story town or whatever it was. Right, and then like Family yeah. Guy. Guarantee you, if that happened to someone with the Fox Family Guy app, Fox would be like, "Fuck you, rebuy it." Oh yeah, because Fox, as we have you heard, we don't like Fox very much. Yeah, no. Well, it's not that we don't like Fox. Fox is just doing stupid shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's just how we. Especially with their gaming community. But yeah, that game was fun. But what the hell were we talking about? Oh, Pokemon Go. Yes, okay. we were t- talking about Pokemon Go. Um, I assume you'll get free Pokeballs a day. If you complete challenges, you'll get some. Right. But the thing I'm pissed off, like, if we have to buy, that's fine. But what happens if you're out of free Pokeballs, you don't have money, and you encounter, like, a rare Pokemon? Right, then you're kind of, like... You're, fu- you're you, fucked. Right, unless they give you, like, one free shot mm-hmm. per Pokemon. Which, that'd be pretty cool. You know, like, hey, here's one Pokeball that you can use for free when trying to catch this thing. Other than that, you're going to have to buy them. I mean, like, that that would be pretty cool. We're going to, like... But then you only get one shot, so if you fuck up with that Pokeball, you're done. We should, we, we'll even make an event out of this. You can actually come meet up with Luigi and I at some of the locations. We're actually going to park our cars. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm going to get out of my car and walk my fat ass around for about four hours to catch Pokemon. Oh, yeah, dude. We're, we, we're going to have, like, a scheduled day to do this. We'll post it up on Gassy if anybody wants to come out and, and uh, hang the out. the game's and... going to be free. Right. But I do know, like, you need to, like, buy your Pokeball thing. Pokeball thing? Well, Oh, mean... the, the wristband you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, you... you... That's an add-on that you can buy separately. The wristband, you Only don't cool have to have it. We right. know we're going to get it. Oh, yeah, definitely. But I, I'm also hoping that they actually let the Pokemon app work off of my smartwatch just like Ingress does. This way I don't have to go buy it and it'll just alert me, hey, there's a Pokemon nearby. And I can be, oh, shit, time okay. to catch them. Okay, because um, <clears throat> we're, like, honestly, the only reason I have a 2DS is for classic game remakes. And then now I have, like, we got the red and yellow right. and shit, like, classic Pokemon, but we did pre-order Sun and Moon, and Luigi and I are going to fucking play the shit out of that. Oh, hell yeah, So, man. 2DS is basically a Pokemon game, but also, I'm glad that we're getting, again, we're, we're getting something Pokemon that's more real. Yes. Like, it's you, you're you're out there. I've been waiting for a game like this forever. Like, I can't I, even tell you. I honestly hope they don't have, like, like, at the trailer... It was your po. I don't know if it was mega. It was Japanese. I don't know if it was Mega Evolutions or if like your Pokemon can get pow- like you get power ups or something. Maybe it was. I'm them sure just they can evolve at some point. Well, it, it, it was it was it was a Scyther and it didn't turn into the Steel. I like there was no evolution. It was like you gave it. Maybe it was just a fucking potion. Maybe it could have just been like he's, right. he was like buffed up for a couple seconds. I don't know. Eh. Yeah, I... the, the point, the, the main point is, is we're excited. Oh, and big time. That trailer, like, they keep releasing little micro trailer. Like, it's going to be fun. Yes, yes. I'm still very excited for Mighty Number no. 9, because I haven't seen a Mega Man-esque game in, like, forever that, that really holds up. Yeah, we talked about that on, the, on a couple podcasts. Yes. Like, and I, at, at first, was like, oh, it's a fucking Mega Man clone. No, it's... Right, it's They're, its own thing. Capcom doesn't want to make it any new ones right now, and people who love the franchise are bitching and pissed like we are. So finally, some of the creative team behind it were just like, okay, from well the then, original, from the let's let's just we'll fucking put our minds together and make something similar. And the funny thing is, Capcom was like, okay, go ahead. Why wouldn't Capcom just be like, if you're that serious about it, let's make a new Mega Man? You know what I'm saying? Right, because the the fans are looking for it, <clears throat> and actually, I didn't. I like the original Mega Man games, don't get me wrong, like, I love playing they them. They were hard as fuck. Oh, they, they were hard as fuck, especially, like, Mega Man 9, 10, the, the ones that are on the, the PlayStation platform. I plan on getting Luigi and I an old school Nintendo, and I have... Oh, fuck I yes, have a dude. Super Nintendo, and I have a Sega, but oh, I don't dude, have... Oh, dude, old school classic game night, that would be the right, best, like, man. Right, like, that's gonna be fucking great. But my favorite series out of it was the Mega Man X series, because... Mega Man X was good. Right, it actually had a storyline to it. The other ones didn't really have a storyline, per se. It was just like, and I know hey, a lot of people bitched about right. it, because, like, this, it would pop up every couple seconds. But right, they're like, hey, go kill this, this boss. Use the door, and you get by right. the door. The door is right to your right, and I'm like, no, it's to my left. Now I've moved. <laughs> the door right. is right there. But I'm pretty sure there was a way in the options you could switch off help. 
Yes. So it's like you, we get less cutscenes, but I guess some people needed the help. But I always one of my favorite Mega uh, Mega Man memories was I would go to Nick's Pizza in Elgin, and they had the Mega Man arcade fighting game there where you'd have to fight the bosses and then you'd get their powers. It was like a classic Mega Man game minus the side scrolling aspect. It was just fighting. So like. While we're waiting for our food, or the adults were having a drink, I would play. I would bring like ten bucks. I would spend two there, spend two there. After dinner, because the adults would sit around and drink a little bit, I would go spend right. the rest of my money. And that was one of the best ones. Oh yeah, definitely. I I love the Mega Man X series, and I got started on it because me and my uh, me and my family went down to Florida to visit some family members back when I was like five years old, and there happened to be I think it was a Funko Land because Funko Lands were like plenty back then. So I went to a Funko before Land. Before they became GameStop. Be, right, before they became GameStop and before they started, like, because I think, like, they, they split off and just, like, disappeared into GameStop and EB Games and Disc Replay and everything. And then uh, eventually GameStop bought fucking EB Games. That's right, like, and Jesus. then it just turned it into a GameStop. But anyway, um, I walked into the Funko Land and I saw this Mega Man X game. I was like, oh, fuck yes. I mean, I was five years old, so I was probably like, oh, my God. Mega Man! Were you confused? Did you think it was actually <laughs> Mega Man 10? No, I, w I didn't know what kind of Mega Man game it was, but I, f I liked the Mega Man games, and then I found out that this has an actual storyline where you play as Zero and Zero Mega was Man. the shit. Oh, Zero was the shit. And I found out that there were codes that I could put into this game and get, like, super power-ups and shit, and I... Man, I fucking love the game. I never beat it, though. I always got to the last boss, Sigma, and I can never beat him, because... That's the thing I, right. like, I realized. When we were kids, the hard game is really beat our fucking asses. Oh, big time. I'm sure they're still hard when we're adults now, but I'm sure we could actually get to the end now. Right, because now we've got the... Now we have the knowledge from past games and everything, and... But, yeah, that, that was one of... The, that's one of my favorites, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to see it. And hopefully they intimate... Uh, blah, 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 they integrate the armor that they did with the old Mega the Man classic games. classic games where you had right. to beat the boss and you had to use the specific I remember, armors you stole to beat the next boss. Right, well... I mean, kind of, but I'm talking about in Mega Man X4, there, there were, like, secret armor pieces okay, that you yeah, could find. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it would give you the ability to hover or do a supercharged shot. Where it or, had nothing to do with beating a boss. It was just right. an upgrade to your own character. Yeah, the, right, I, that, at that point. So, um, and I know did that... Did you ever play Battle Network? The Mega Man Battle Network? It was, like, on the yes, handhelds? Yes, I, I played those I ones. never owned one of those ones. Oh, I... I still have mine. I'll let you borrow it. Man, That game, those games are phenomenal too, but that's because they're strategy-based. The uh, You get like a certain number of chips, and if you can put like ones down, and then you can like supercharge the shots or like, you know, like continuously like do multiple damage, but... Um, so it's similar to the Dragon Ball Z trading card game where it was real people of, fighting, right, it but gives you, you like cards to power them up. Right, it gives you like seven chips at a time and you can pick like out the chips and all this kind of stuff. It's actually really cool and really fun. Um, they give you other kinds of armors and you get... But the best part about it is you don't just play as Mega Man and Lan, the two main characters. You play as Mega Man plus all of his friends. Awesome. Right, awesome. and it's got a little bit of puzzling to it. It's it's got all all kinds of stuff for everybody. It's it's that's one of the more wonderful Mega Man games. And another good news: Sony has the rights. They're going to put it on the PlayStation Network uh, either this fall or early spring. The Tournament Fighter Mighty Morphin Power Rangers game that was exclusive to Genesis. Oh where no! You, shit! Yes. You start off with the five original Rangers. The first boss was um, the Manitar guy, but the second boss was the Evil Green Ranger, and once you beat the Evil Green Ranger, and that, because round one, you had to fight, like, for example, we'll say the second, well, it's actually the third battle, but the second guy you fight, you fight Evil Green Ranger, you beat him, but then round two is actually the Megazord versus Dragonzord, or it would be, like, the Megazord versus the monster's biggest okay. form. So... But I remember, like, it was so awesome, because once you beat Evil Green Ranger and you beat the Dragon Zord, the select screen before each battle, the Green Ranger was available now. Oh, that's So cool. he becomes the good Green Ranger, and there were cut scenes and stuff. And I remember the final boss is you fight Goldar, and I used to, when I got good at the game, I would save playing as the Green Ranger until fighting Goldar. Yeah, before Season 2 and 3 when he was a badass and was ready to kill people. Yeah, Goldar was really cool, and then he just became comic relief. But um, 
the game was the best because you don't fight a giant Goldar after you beat him. I, if I'm not mistaken, you fight his Zord. Oh, yeah, that stupid Zord that he had. And in the game, that Zord was fucking hard. And I'm sure that means they'll release the uh, the Genesis version of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie game where you actually play as the Rangers and you fight the Zords and stuff. Where That's you fight cool. Ivan Uza's Zords and the final boss is you're in space... Uh, fucking Falcon Ninja Megazord fighting Ivan Ooze with the Zords combined. Oh, that's that's which again cool, dude. something I would wish they would release for Legacy the movie line would be oh, yeah. Ivan Ooze's Zord. Right, Cause, right. Because we have these Megazords and shit, but they really have nothing to fight. Right. <laughs> even well, when I mean we they can kids, fight each other, but you like, know, even when we were kids, it was like they never released giant sized monsters. At least um, not like like they released monsters regular sized. Right. But it was never like. They never had, like, this giant fucking scorpion. Like, they never had anything. Right. I think the only monster thing they ever released was Serpentera. Lord Zed's fucking Zord. I, so I remember my cousin had that, and I didn't give a shit about that because he was a bad guy. Right, and I don't even think Serpentera transforms at all, does it? Nope. It's, it's just the dragon, and I think... Comes that, back in Forever Red, though. Right, and then... But they get it, don't they? Like, they obtain the Zord, and then the Zord is one of theirs or something? Well, it could, no, because it, it's destroyed, and they don't see it again. Right, you gotta Forever remember, Red, I haven't seen Season 2 or Season 3 in, like, years, so it's a little... In, in Wild Force, Forever Red, they get it out. But anyway, back to the game. Like, since they're doing that one, I hope they release more of those games. Oh, yeah, definitely. And then, finally... Yeah. Um, we have Injustice 2 is coming out. Now, Injustice is one of the fucking fighting games I'm the best at. Oh, yeah. And... I, I like it because it's, it's very Mortal Kombat-esque, but I... It's it, DC. It, it's really... Sometimes the controls can be a little wonky. And the I, story mode was great. Fantastic. Fan-fucking-tastic. And I'm not bragging or anything, but I remember we had a tournament, a Pepper Scrap Productions tournament, where I invited my friends over and we played. And then we had some of the people who talked a big game... And then got lost their... fucking decimated. Yep. I'm good at fighting games, and when something's fun, it's good. I'm definitely going to have another tournament just because oh, yeah, it's definitely. fun. And you know what? If you actually fucking sit and practice and play, I give out cash and like trophies and good prizes and We shit. should have a fucking Budokai tournament, dude. Fuck it. Like, That's what Dragon I think. Dragon Ball Z, Mortal Kombat, Injustice, Smash Bros. Like, as simple as that, fighting games were always my right. go-to, something I was good and at. And they, they do have a 2D side-scrolling fighting Naruto game that I love. Um, they've got the Ultimate Ninja series that was on the PS2, and then they put Ultimate Ninja Storm on for the PS3 and PS4. The, um, number three Ultimate Ninja, oh my god, the, the attacks and the brutality of it was just awesome. Yeah, that, that game, oh, I'm yeah. not, like, he, fucking, you play me Mortal Kombat, Injustice, any of the Smash Brothers, or, or fucking, what was the other one? We were, or, or fucking Marvel vs. Yes. Capcom. Like, I fucking decimate, but I fucking tried playing Naruto. Oh, and Dragon Ball Z. Right, it's not the same kind of... I tried playing Naruto, and I'm like, fuck you, I can't even get this right. shit down. That's because when they took it to Ninja Storm, they made it a 3D environment, so you can, like, run around your opponent and all that kind of stuff. It's not a, a, a top view. It's literally, you're looking over the shoulder of one character as the other character is fighting you. It's it's a little bit difficult and disorienting, but the older and also I never really watched. The, I'm sure if I watched right. the show, I would be I'd be there with you. Right, it, but we need to take all the best fighting games, old school and new school, and have a fucking tur like a big eight hour tournament where we right, play like you six remember, different games. You remember how the original uh, DBZ Budokai was, where it was side scroller, you couldn't like move right. and twist. That's how the Naruto game is. I think you'd be better at that one. Oh, Oh right? yeah, definitely. Those... So I think we should just implement like a fighting game tournament and just have like a list of games, games and... to go through and like right. one trophy for like only the winner gets the trophy just for right. some fun yeah just just to hang out have some fun and and do some shit but yeah injustice too i'm looking forward to what they do with it because the the now, story they, they had leaked a... it a, uh, last week that's why it's on this it's on this podcast but just recently we're recording the podcast a little late uh this part not the live comic-con part but this part we're recording a day before the podcast comes out and they just like just today an image was leaked and we don't know if it was on purpose or whatever who cares it's fucking green lantern batman fighting the flash and if you look oh, closely yes. on the flash the flash's speed force is fucking going crazy so it's like 
Super Speed Force Barry Allen versus Green Lantern Batman. So what that makes me think is there's power ups in the game. Right. So and that's one of the additions. Any character can grab a fucking. Well, they'll be able to get a Green Lantern ring and use that as like a power up. Kinda right. Like where you can or transform. Fear ring or right. Like all that kind of stuff. Like that's certain characters cool. have their own things, and it's like that. I think that would be cool because it's like right. Dragon Ball Z almost. If you can't gain enough power, you can transform. Right. Exactly, and that's that's one of the biggest things that I love about that game is the power boost. What oh, the hell was that? Nice. Yeah, the power boost <laughs> going Super Saiyan. Like, that was the best things from Budokai. I remember, dude, Frieza was a motherfucker in the original Budokai. Oh, my God. But that's because he was the end boss. Right. But, like, I just remember. And then he's a little did, bitch in number and then two. Super and Saiyan three. would run down. Like, you. In the right. original Budokai, you had a time limit. So I was like, well, fucking rushing to beat him as right. Super Saiyan Goku. Well, all all of the the games have a time limit when you're Super Saiyan, which is I like that because Super well, Saiyan is like, like Raging Blast and Raging Blast Two. You transform and it's you you're just transform. You just transform and it's just okay, like ah. yeah. Well, I didn't. I like, love Tenkaichi was like that too. You didn't have like it didn't like go down. It was for you. better because that's more realistic to Dragon right. Ball Z. But number two and number three, they had the like it, it dissipates after a while, mm-hmm. which which is nice because you can't. They've even said it in the show. You can't stay in Super Saiyan forever. I mean, even when they're in the relaxed state, eventually their hair is going to turn back because it's still draining your energy. Right. And that right. was one of the best parts too. Right. And I remember in the series, <laughs> you remember everyone had like a weird transformation, and like Krillin just had unlocked potential. Right. And literally, his attack barely went up. It was the right. weakest fucking thing in like the original Budokai. It, it wasn't was it so just funny. like a slightly bigger Destructo Di- or no it was Destructo Disc Barrage where you threw multiple. Right. That's it. That, like that was that was the big and attack. Like, that, like when Goku goes Super Saiyan he fucking like his st- his defense attack and everything go up sky high almost double and Krillin's right. attack was just like like a fucking one tenth of a toothpick, it just went up. I'm like, right. Oh, that's Krillin for you. Like I remember, like if you transform in Budokai three, if you transform into Super Saiyan four Goku or Super Saiyan four Vegeta after finding it after playing the game oh, for yep. like thirty fucking hours. Yep. Did you did you ever get the specials like um, Broly and all that shit? Yeah, and I remember that took forever. Also, you for had me. to unlock the special moves too, like the final right. shine for. Uh, because you got you could get Gogeta like there it, is a cheat for it though which I will tell the audience right now. Now here's the trick to it: you go over to the skill the skill purchase area, you hold the shoulder buttons and continuously go in and go out of it. Now do not double back out of the the screen; only back out once. So go into the shop as if you're you're gonna purchase something. Hold the shoulder buttons, back out, go back in, go back out continuously you will slowly see your percentage start going up and you'll get all of the fucking moves Mm -hmm. and it's great but after a while it stops doing it for you and you land on like 99 percent, and you're missing like maybe about 10 moves and it won't like like it's very rare that the percent's gonna go up but you have to purchase at least one move or it will not save that for you and then you have to do it all over again and you don't have any of the moves or anything unless you purchase something because then it will save your game. So that's that's my and I, little... And I remember, like, they yeah. like, not since fucking the fighting game on the PlayStation 1 can you play as GT characters. And we're like, oh yeah, okay, cool. Right. It took fucking forever For, when you right. finally unlocked them and you were like, what the hell is the point? Right, because you had to... Uh, so they had a level up system for this game, which was great. I love the level up system because you could you could physically make your character grow. But the thing that I hated about it was it wouldn't unlock specific events until you hit certain levels. Mm-hmm. So you, I think you could be in the same spot where right, you're supposed to. Fucking... I think you could get everything once you hit level forty with each character. But until then, you couldn't do much. Like you, you flew around. You mm-hmm. you went around the planet battled everybody from saga one then you went to namek did the same thing then you went back to earth did the same thing for the boo saga and that was three because two was the right. fucking game board which i did not like right oh no you you go to namek you fight frieza you go back to earth you fight the androids then you fight cell then, then you're you, on king kai's planet right for boo uh not yet you don't get you don't like physically go to king kai's planet and fly around it you it's been so long, right you seen. find l- the little um 
the little area, the pinpoint on the map where it says, hey, here's your mission. You go to that, and then it just, like, teleports you to King Kai's mm -hmm. planet, and then you're fighting, yeah. like, Kid Buu That's on right. King Kai's planet. But, I mean, there were things, like, you had to... Remember finding the Dragon Balls? Oh, finding the Dragon Balls that was... was fun. It wasn't hard. No, and they were always in the same exact spot, no matter what. But you had to... The problem with it was, is that there were, like, two, two or three of them for the Frieza saga... And then, if you missed one, you couldn't go back to get it. It was cool, though. Like, right. I don't know if it was three, but one of the games, when you were on Namek, it is actually Perunga instead of Shenron. Yeah. That was fucking yeah. cool. Yeah. And it, it, that that was pretty cool. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but back to... We're talking about, essentially, fighting games this section right. this time. But yeah, Injustice 2, uh, keep showing us images like that and our cocks will get hard. Oh yeah, definitely, and we will be fucking that game like no other. Let's move on to the anime section. Anime. Animated. Assholes? Possibly. Alright, once again, not that much anime news, but if you're a fan of Dragon Ball, what the hell demon dog bark was that? Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> GT, Dragon Ball Super, if you're following Dragon Ball Super like we always recommend, you know Future Trunks is coming back. But this poster image just released, and it's Future Trunks, my, you remember my, he, uh, Emperor Pilaf's fucking friend, then she gets turned into a kid. And then she she's an adult again, and apparently they hint at um, Trunks having a crush on her and all this other shit and whatever. But then the villain for this new future Trunks arc, his name is Black Goku. And yeah, no, racist, it's not like that at all, because he looks just like Goku, but the character's name is Black Goku. But here's the thing, he is wearing a... Portara earring in one of his ears. So I have a funny feeling that what they're going to wind up doing with this is that... He's going to have a black Vegeta or some something of that nature, and he's going to turn around and fuse with the guy, and then uh, Goku and Vegeta are going to have to fuse in their their god state. Right. They're gonna. My thing is similar to that. I believe it is a Goku and Vegeta from a different universe fucking up shit because now there's nothing else there because this it's confirmed that is the future Trunks we know and love. The, um, they just went with Trunks' original hair design. Right, and I think that... Because I, I actually read into it, and when... Originally, when Future Trunks was shown, his hair was supposed to be like Bulma's, but it was literally just a coloring mistake. And instead of fixing it halfway through, because half the animations were done, they just kept it that color. This is Akira Toriyama going, hey, um, this is the original color. It's this, he literally stated it's the same character. Right. It's just this is the original color he's supposed to have. He's supposed right. to, his face is supposed to be Vegeta. His fucking hair is supposed to be Bulma. There is no mistakes. It's the same character. Stop bitching. Right. Yeah. And and that's what me and Randy were talking about anyway. All right. So, you know, Trunks' hair color, I always thought that it was supposed to be blue because Akira Toriyama does that. He, he fuses the two likelihoods or likenesses of two... Um, characters and then smashes them together. Like, if you ever notice, if you take a straight line down Gochita's face, it's half Goku, half Vegeta. He looks different, but half of it is Vegeta's face, half of it is Goku's face, and that's how you can tell that they're fused. So, we can kind of tell that this was a mistake that they're just kind of correcting now. Because so much animation is just being done already, it's like, it would cost more to be like, no, recolor. No, right. recolor. But yeah, so I'm thinking. I'm surprised they didn't do that for like a remastered version for a Blu-ray or something. Right. You know, like it was funny to... seeing all these people going like it's just trunks in God mode. No, no, his hair's fucking down. Right. It's Clearly, not... you're a fan. <laughs> right. You can't. You can't have a Super Saiyan with non-spiky hair. It just doesn't. It doesn't work like that. Correct. Right. And you know another thing. I that like how Trunks is getting some pussy though. That's good. Yeah, that is good. Turning but you know, you and I were talking about um, power ups before, weren't we? Uh, what were we talking about with them? Like, um, oh yeah, that that we believe that Trunks and Gohan should be way stronger because they've even said it in the show. Half Saiyans are stronger than full Saiyans. Right. So I don't understand why. They, like, I mean, I can see why Trunks they turned Gohan into a pussy. Oh my God, they did. He Trunks is be still a badass. Trunks is a badass for sure. But, he, yeah, you know, Gohan should be going Super Saiyan 3 at this point, not... I mean, I understand that he's got kids to take care of, but look at Goku. He's had, He has two boys 
And now, Go Gohan only has right. Pan because at this point she's just a child, like a little infant baby. Right, but they're having another kid right now, so they're about to have their second kid. Or no, 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 because they did have Pan, mm-hmm. and Pan was the, their only child right now. So they have Pan as one kid, and in GT they had her fighting and stuff. So I'm sure that they're gonna do the same thing. But they're gonna give fans what they want and actually make her go Super Saiyan. Right. Because it's already happened in Resurrection. Right, because Akira Toriyama yeah, is one of those guys that he gives his fans what they want, but just not in a timely fashion. Mm-hmm. And he does that because he needs you guys to like... He needed to take a break from Dragon Ball for a little bit, because that was... He does so much more stuff. He wanted to focus on other things, but now he's back and he's back with a vengeance. He's giving right. us what we want. We want Future Trunks, one of his most popular characters, and we're right. getting it, and it's fucking awesome. Can you imagine? It's almost like they took the idea, like, oh, Oh, Goku and Trunks fought fake. They weren't really going to hurt each other. Now, Goku and Trunks are actually going to fight. So. And I'd love to see that battle. But I want to... It's almost unfair what if now. The, the villain Vegeta... What if they all can go Super Saiyan 3 at this point now? Yeah, but see, here's... What I don't like is... Because Boo is still in well, we don't know how strong. Timeline. Yeah, we still don't know how strong Trunks, Trunks is. is. Like, right. what if this new Desolate... It's the same, it's the same character. What if, like... Since the events, Boo was awakened. You don't. Yeah. We don't know what the hell is going on. Right, and like we said before, Goku's not back. Vegeta's not back. Who's to say that Trunks just didn't like power up and go Super Saiyan three, and now he's got that power locked inside him, and he's just hiding it for a later right. time. It's, so it's, it's gonna be good. Yeah, I'm hoping that that they've got things it's like gonna, that going on. It's gonna be probably one of the standout and seasons. I, I heard rumors. F. I heard rumors, but not full like disclosure. They're, they may bring in Super Saiyan 4. It may not be the same one that was in GT, but the, I have a feeling that he's got like, okay, you can go Super Saiyan 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever, because he always says that there's always another transformation. Mm-hmm. It never ends. You can go way past the ceilings on any transformation. So I have a funny feeling that he kind of like branched it off and you so can either we, turn into a god or you can turn into Super I Saiyan I heard that Ford. too. It's like it's two different paths. Like in GT, if you had a tail, you had the opportunity to go Super Saiyan 4, which was a different path. Super Saiyan 5 definitely exists if, if you wanted to go up one more stage. But by right. that point, GT was almost over. So now it's the same situation. Trunks might not have the ability to go god yet. But he takes it on the other route, and he's just building upon the already well, the strength he already has. Right, right. Which I'm super excited to see what goes on. I haven't seen any of the tournament series yet because I'm waiting for it to end so I can just watch it all the way binge through. Watch. I'm a super binge watcher. Super binge watcher. I watch every new episode <laughs> every week. He's the one that likes to keep track. I'm the one that's like, no, let me wait until everything's all said and done, and then I'll sit down and watch it and be like, oh, my God, my mind's been blown. <laughs> so far, you know, you got a little extra footage added, but so far it was just like a rehash of Battle of the Gods, a rehash of Resurrection F, which was awesome. Right. And now it's, it's they're doing their own thing. Right. And... Immediately after Resurrection F, that's when they started going into actual full storyline. Mm-hmm. Well, no, no, no. Between Resurrection F and... Um, and yeah. And uh, Battle of the Gods, and Battle of the Go- yeah. Between those two, they did have a little bit of a story arc because because Vegeta does go off to go train, and so does Goku. The one thing you have to do, we have to remember here, is we'll never see Pan grow up past three or four years old because this all takes place in between after beating Majin Buu and when Goku finds Oob at the very end of Dragon Ball Z. It's those hidden chapters in between there and that gap. So we're not going to see Goten as an adult. We're not going to see Pan as a teenager because then it wouldn't make sense to what they're doing. But then again, how many times did Dragon Ball Z jump? It jumped over sections of time. Like, Gohan was a I'm kid. sure if this all does well, they're right. going to go past. It'll you be see Goku him going from a kid to a teenager, then to an adult I'm within saying three they, seasons. They, it has to end... Pan can't be any older because it, ha- it it has to go back to that final episode of Dragon Ball Z where she and Goku are at the fair and then Goku's a cockass and has to leave with Oob and he ditches his family and leaves. But hopefully they'll just show that like maybe they can like the next thing after Trunks or something, Future Trunks' new arc, it can be like at, like they'll show glimpses of that. Okay. So like 
you can go back and watch and it'll be right after that. Whatever. I'm sure like right. they're not going to stop I always thought that this soon, was though. a continuation on the original series. I didn't think that it was like a, a no, secret like footage. No, it's what happens which is again, why wouldn't then why can't Goku go Godmo when he's fighting Oob? No, it takes That's place right. it takes place in the years after the, be- the defeat of Kid Buu and the next World Tournament saga where Pan goes from not even existing to being 3 years old. So all of this, oh yeah, because it does jump a little bit. Yeah. All of this is happening in that missing gap. Yeah, but then again, like I said, why didn't he go Super Saiyan? Like Super Saiyan God. It's just mode? like the whole. That's why he said it, it's still possible for GT, even though for it to be canon eventually. But it just it's either almost they need to have a good explanation with everything. Like right, like he has right to have now, like a power can, down or something. Goku's not even going Super Saiyan. He's just going Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan at this point. Mostly when he transforms, so it's like okay when he's fighting Boo or Oob when he's Oob in the end of actual Dragon Ball Z, which takes place. This is technically a prequel to the last couple episodes of Dragon Ball Z, the Oob arc. So it's just like right, and Goku's so powerful that he can beat the shit out of Frieza without ever turning Super Saiyan. He's so powerful. Why can't he beat the shit out of Oob? Like well, that, that was before Golden Frieza. Right, and that was before Golden Frieza, but I'm, like I'm saying, if he's that again, pop- now they added Golden Frieza, and he had to become Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, to fight Golden Frieza. Oh my god, we can debate this fucking all day. Like, this this so could now, be its own fucking show. Like, this is almost a rant at this point, because now it's like, if he can fucking easily cream Boo and Frieza now, why, like... Why I is get, he so hard with with, with uh, Oob, when Oob yeah. starts getting tough? Goku could have just went. I mean, I, I Goku wanted him to. Goku makes fun of Oob to get him to power up to make sure it was Boo and all this other shit. But it's just like maybe I don't fucking know. Yeah, it's it's really weird, but I mean, let's just enjoy what we're getting. Yeah, let's just enjoy what we're getting. Because if we think about it too hard, it'll piss us off. Right? Because I'm pretty sure that Akira Toriyama has a great plan for the end. He he may even go. F- Further past that, and we might see what happens after the tournament between the section of the tournament with Oob and them GT. fighting in GT. Like, he might give us another section beyond that. He might bridge the gap, or what, we'll, right. we'll figure something out for sure. Exactly. So, I mean... Maybe Whis is just like, alright, well, fuck all of you. And he just... Oh, that would be a cop-out, though, though. It's right? just like, you forget how to go Super Saiyan God. Right, like, if he, like mind bends them or some fucking weird shit and then they forget how to do it and they they lose their power level like weiss and bills take it away from them somehow because they're gods Mm -hmm. something 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 stupid doesn't happen right right but But i'm sure that he's got a good plan because he's he's never disappointed his fans i i've never been disappointed with not even one of his fillers was disappointing i that's the only series where i can sit down and watch the fillers and be like yeah dragon ball z Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all we got for anime, so let's move on to the superhero news. Uh, yes, you're uh, listening to the uh, superhero section. <laughs> uh, I killed Miss Piggy and ate her bacon for breakfast. Alright, so... Welcome to our superhero section. Of course. Um, We're going to talk the uh, since Power Rangers are now part of the superhero. Right. The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers fan film, MMPR, not the adult one... The one where they've been making it for about five years now, and I know myself and a couple other people donated to it, and it's taking so fucking long. It, Google, uh, YouTube at MMPR Fan Film, it's the one where it's a female Blue Ranger, and they have like a teaser trailer out, and they're just, they're just fucking ducking and dodging questions now they're blaming the visual effects team for taking too long and then you go to the visual effects team website and they're saying the effects have been done for about a year now last thing they told us is they were doing soundtrack so i'm starting to think because the costume looks very similar to saban's new costumes in the new movie that's coming out i'm starting to think saban was like hey you guys can't release this it's too similar right and and just like saban threw a bitch fit with the adult uh, bootleg right. universe, the bootleg universe Power Rangers fan film, they're just too proud to go, hey, sorry we took all your money and started making this, but Saban said no. Right. They don't want, and if they're even bigger assholes, they don't want to refund money. Right, because you know, like... I donated 50 bucks. I haven't like, got any rewards, and I haven't seen anything. Right, and that, that kind of fucking sucks when, like, films and shit do that, but I mean, Saban... Saban's always been an asshole. He's racist. He's sexist. He, 
He's homophobic. He and he's out for money. So if you have anything similar or relating to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers or his original idea of Morn- Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, he's after your God, dick for money. Swear to God, if this new Power Rangers film is a continuation, it's a sequel to like the original Mighty Morphin series. Then he, I think, because there wasn't even plans for new Power Rangers movie until about a year ago, or right? A year or two ago, he. It almost seems like Saban saw what they were doing. It was a continuation like the upgraded costumes, and he pretty much stole the idea from the fans and then threatened the fans with a lawsuit if they didn't stop production. But then these fucking fans are like, okay, well, we got like $2 million from all of our supporters to make this, and we we can't we spent money, so how we can't afford to pay it back, so now we can't fucking tell people Saban did it. So now they look like assholes, too. They look like right. even bigger assholes, like I said, now that the effects right. company's like, stop fucking saying you're waiting on effects from us. We've been done. They've been done. Right. Stop fucking blaming us. It, now it's 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 on you. What the fuck? Right. And I mean, and like he said, these guys might not be assholes. They may have finished the film and just can't release it because Saban put a fucking hold on but it for a lawsuit. At least tell us. Right. I mean, that's that's the proper thing to do. Be like, hey, you know what? We made the film. We just can't release it to the public because this is what's going on. That's all we ask for. We're not going to be pissed off at you. We're going to be pissed off at Saban. But right now, you guys are the ones pissing us off because you can't just take your heads out of your asses for two seconds and be like, all right, you know, this is fucked fucked up. up. We no, they didn't even fuck up. They were just doing a fan film. It's but basically they, we a, fucked up by not telling you guys right. the situation. Sorry, right? We can't give you the money back because we spent it all. Right, and I don't understand what that why they don't just turn around and go. It's a parody off of your Power Rangers. It it may it may be a continuation in your eyes, but this well, is a parody in how they we raised see it. so much money. They right. technically made money off of it, so right. that's why Saban can sue and be like, "Well, that two million dollars." you made for a Power Rangers thing that's not even your copyright. So the, I, I get, but right. still, I don't know, just an right. animation. That was going to be my rant, but uh, I'm not ranting. Yeah, it's been a long fucking weekend. It, it, it takes too much energy. Fucking too much energy. So man. anyway, uh, apparently the Hulk, even playing off the, the Planet Hulk situation, since he's in Thor 3, he's going to actually have some Planet Hulk armor on him when we oh, first find the Hulk. Oh, yes. That's, that's fucking awesome. And I'm calling it right now that it will be kind of like the end of Planet Hulk when we first find the Hulk. And I, they can always make a fucking brand new Hulk movie that shows where Bruce Banner went. And it can be fucking Planet Hulk. And it can be almost a prequel to Thor 3. Right, because I finally to. fucking saw Civil War and they even asked him, where's Hulk and, and Thor? And they're like... I don't Netflix know. Conflicts in different areas. Like, they right. mention, they reference something else going on. Right. Right. So, I mean, obviously there's something there's something going on here. Speaking but, of Civil War, uh, Mr. Thunderbolt Ross forgot to put in, you know, Harlem being destroyed by his abomination monster and the Hulk as well. I guess he wanted to leave, you know, from the Incredible Hulk movie with Edward Norton, which is still canon, part of the universe. Right. I guess he kind of wanted to leave that one out so he didn't look like a piece of shit. Right. Well, sorry, Mr. Ross, you did destroy fucking Harlem. Let's not forget about that. Right. <laughs> but whatever. Let's blame everyone else for everything else. A piece oh, yeah. of shit. Yeah, let's, let's do that shit. Like, fuck <laughs> this. Oh, God. Yeah, I, I actually really enjoyed the movie. Um... I mean, I had to watch it off my tablet because I couldn't get to the theater today because the show started at 12.55 and I had to work at 3. So I was like, fuck, I don't have enough time to go sit down and watch the movie. So I bootlegged it, of course. And uh, and I watched it, but it was a little, like, it would stop to buffer and all that kind of shit. But it was a really good movie. I, I really enjoyed it. Hell yeah. We did find a few plot holes with it, though. When uh, I was sitting down with uh, Michael J. Fox, we were uh, sitting down watching it. And... Um, we found one big plot hole. Cap's doing all of everything that he's doing for absolutely fucking no reason. Yeah. There's literally no reason to it. There's the no rhyme, no reason. The speech that Sharon Carter gives at Peggy's funeral uh-huh. is what cements in his mind that he shouldn't sign the, the accords. That's it. Yeah. A speech from a rushed love interest because they didn't show any sort of connection. She was just spying on him in Winter Soldier. But now all of a sudden, they've never been on a date or anything, but they make out. Which that bothers me now that I think about it. It's just like, okay. Because right. even Haley Atwell, who played Peggy Carter, was like, I didn't like that in the movie. doesn't make any sense. He's just mourning the loss of the love of his life. And there hasn't been a hint at a romantic relationship. There's just been hints of like, oh, yeah, well, people in the comics know they get together. Right. And all of a sudden in this one, a long overdue kiss happens. Fuck you guys. Right? Yeah. That's, that's fucking, that's fucking Dumb weird. Piss yeah. on an orchard. 
Anyway, fuck it. <laughs> but speaking of the Marvel Universe, Brie Larson is going to be the new Captain Marvel. She, there is no more Ronda Rousey or any of this well, bullcrap. It's not 100, it's not confirmed yet, but in this stage of the film process, it's gonna, she is it. Right. There she's, is no more contenders. She's the one. I guarantee you in the next week or two, they're going to be like, yep, this is her. Because the yep. same thing happened when they cast Iron Man for Robert Downey Jr. Like, there was just, it was, the only rumor of the cast was him, and then it happened. So, it's going right. to happen. And she, she, it's a good fit. Yeah, I don't, like... I didn't get a chance to see a picture of Brie Larson. I'm not even big into Captain Marvel. Right. Either. So, right. It's, it's good. That's going to be an actual another superhero female that people can look up to. I'm, right. I'm Instead it. of them making fucking toys. <laughs> yeah, fucking. Come on, Marvel. That's your strike. Yeah, strike <laughs> one, dickholes. And then, uh, <laughs> finally, you know. The, this is Gassy Radio. Oh, we yeah, had I farts and, 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 and burps. I burped. The Batman vs. Superman rated R cut trailer is sick. Yeah. I absolutely fucking loved it. I haven't it seen it yet. It didn't show anything fucking crazy, but it's telling you there's more that you need that you're gonna see. And there's gonna I'm gonna be... guess they're gonna put another twenty to thirty minutes of oh yeah, oh yeah, a video 100%. into that one. One hundred percent. Which actually it's might help some of the shit that had some holes and. Right. It's going to explain blood. some shit it's to us. It's going to be great, and hopefully some of those lame boobs. Uh, oh, please, please. She's help. fucking hot. But yeah, that's it with superhero news. Let's go into that entertainment section, son. Mark 2, WAP 7. Entertainment engage. Okay, so Dan Aykroyd apparently says the Ghostbusters movie is good. Now, about seven hours ago, he posted saying, just saw the movie with Ernie... And Bill Murray, and it was awesome. The ending scene with the boss is great. All this other shit. And then, like, two hours ago, the same exact post was posted. So I'm thinking the first post got fucking littered with spam of all the people fucking saying, Fuck you! Fuck you! You're lying! Right. We know he's getting paid to say it's good. Right. That's that's simple as that. But right. it's just funny how the backlash is so deep in the hate that... He had to repost the same status, and he has to, if he's being paid to promote it, he has to post it. But eventually, one of the studio execs, or even him, was just like, oh my god, there's so much fucking hate. I gotta delete this one. And then he fucking made a new one. Hey, if you, Dan, Mr. Aykroyd, big fan. Uh, I mean, I wish that there was a real Ghostbusters coming out. Let me just tell you something. There's a privacy setting where you can just post whatever you want. Comments either have to be approved, or assholes can't comment, and that's just your opinion. That's the beauty about Facebook. You should have did that because there was still a bunch of hate on the new post. Right. I mean, everybody's going to have hate about the new bus Ghostbusters because they all love the old ones. So, I mean, it's – it's. I mean, it turned out to be – it is what it is. Um, I'm – I want to see it. I want to see it because I love the Ghostbuster movies too. Oh yeah, I'm seeing and, it for sure. Right, and we got to see what what's up with the the new one. So hopefully, it is a lot better than everybody thinks it's gonna be. And uh, Rogue One, everyone's saying it's in crisis mode because reshots are ordered. Well, guess what? The reshoots shots. <laughs> the reshoots are because they're adding a new character that is familiar to Star Wars lore. Or they're adding more footage of a character. So essentially what they're saying, because they're being trying to be all fucking quiet about it, either they're adding more Darth Vader to make it feel more like a Star Wars movie, or they're a apparently, which this is going to piss me off if they do so, they're adding the actor who's playing the young Han Solo in the, the young Han Solo movie that comes out in 2019, they're adding a scene with him. And I do not like that because you want fucking Han Solo to be... That person you find in episode four at the bar who helps Luke and Obi Wan try to get to Alderaan. Like, I, don't right. fucking throw Han Solo in this one, please, well, Star Wars. Here's, here's for the love of Star Wars, my fucking like livelihood. Don't fucking put Han Solo in it. You already had to put Chewie for fucking no reason in Star Wars Episode Three. Yeah, I know they were on the Wookiee planet Kashyyyk, but there's no fucking way Chewbacca was a fucking general. And then in fucking episode 5 and 6, Chewie doesn't fucking say anything to Luke about knowing Yoda. Like, fuck your mother. Fuck it in its ass. Well, there's also one other thing that you that you overlooked, too. They had the games. What happens if they're trying to put Star Destroyer into it? You remember? He was played by... Star Killer. Yeah, Star, Star Killer. Killer. And 
maybe they're going to put him into it because he was Vader's apprentice and they did say that the games were canon. Yeah, um, well, they were canon until when Disney took over. Oh, really? Then, yeah, then their uh, games and books are no longer canon. Oh, uh, well, you know what? They might still implement it anyway because Sam Witwer did play a really good character and Vader having an apprentice, that shows kind of his kind of growth. And they did. They're putting um, a fan favorite, Expand the Universe, now called Legends character, in Rebels. It's not going to be the same person you're supposed to be getting, but uh, it's still going to be the Grand Moth. So hopefully that that plays out good. I mean, I don't want them to fucking start force-feeding all these Legends characters in, into the shows and the fucking standalone movies just right. to do it, which is why don't put Han Solo in it. No. I would love more Vader. That would definitely make yeah. it more Star Wars, but we already knew there was going to be some brutal Vader scenes. I mean, if you got to add some stuff to make it feel more like Star Wars, because it's, it's a Star Wars war movie. It's supposed to feel gritty. Hey, maybe It's they're... supposed to be on its own. What's one of the biggest things they're talking about now, too, is that they need to make it feel like more like a Star Wars. What, what's the, the guy's name that played Vader? Uh, uh, something Christian or Christian something? Well, the original... Uh... Maybe they've got some shots where he takes off his helmet and that's him. It, it could be that would be that would be cool. But right, that was already one of the rumors. Right, so that's that's what I'm thinking. They're they might be shooting those scenes now because they they turned around and said, "Oh, this is kind of what the fans are expecting." So maybe let's in, implement it into it. And also another thing, a lot of people hate on the prequels. I don't, but a lot of people hate on the prequels. So I think they would kind of be more pissed if it was Hayden Christensen because he only he yeah he's like he's Vader who never gets a red lightsaber when he fights Obi Wan. So it sucks because it's blue versus blue. But he does. It's burnt. He he does play Vader at the very end of Revenge of the Sith, and he puts the suit on, and that's actually him in it. It would be stupid to put him in the suit without taking his helmet on if they right. used him, like because then it would be like anyone can fucking be in there. And then right. James Earl Jones does the voice, so it's not even him. So that would be cool if they showed him right. fucking Crips. I mean, that would be the like with his burnt face and shit. That'd be cool. That would I, be. I would very much enjoy that. But just I don't be too. fucking Han Solo. Oh yeah, no. We now if it's. Ewan McGuire is Obi Wan, sensing all the shit going on. I'll fucking cream my pants. Oh yes. See how a Star Wars fan? We're fucking. We hate one thing, but we love the other thing. That right. would be fucking dope. Yes, because I, I would love to see Obi Wan be in this. I would, I would love to have Ewan McGuire right. be back. But at the same time, again, listen. Now there's a negative. He's right. he's the transformation is he's supposed to look like Alec Guinness. As long as they they have they would have to use some prosthetics this time. Oh yeah, definitely. Because Ewan McGuire is not old enough to play sixty year old fucking. Ewan well, McGuire. I mean, how long does Rogue One take after the movie the... ends? Literally, like fucking. No, no, bef- like it's, it's, it's the movie's like four days before Episode Four. Seriously? Yes. So, yeah, then he's got to be old as shit at that point. Yeah, like, it's it wouldn't work. Like, Right. They would have to fucking make up the shit out of him or mm-hmm. something in order like to Like, it wouldn't make in. sense to have him in episode 8 or 9 because Luke never knew Obi-Wan is young. Right. And you can't get a dead guy to come back to life. <laughs> right. Well, I mean... He his voice, like, in the new movie, but, yeah. Well, I mean, they do have the Force spirits, but, I mean, they're not actually back to life. Yeah, he's not going to fucking turn into young Obi-Wan because Luke's going to be like, who the fuck is this guy? Right. The way, uh... <laughs> The Haunted Mansion remake got a director, Guillermo del Toro, director of Pacific Rim and some fucked up horror movies. They're, are they remaking it and is it still going to be the comedy and everything? No, or? they're remaking it like the horror attraction it should be. Okay, okay, yeah, that that makes more That's sense. That's why they got del Toro. Right, I did like the first one that they made with Eddie Murphy and everything. It was funny, it was humorous, it it, it made me laugh. I watched it several times. Oh, yeah, don't times. even worry, it has nothing to do with that one. This is just right. a flat out remake. Okay, yeah, okay, so then... That's going to be good because it's a new, it's literally something new to us. Oh, yeah. Which I, I'd like to hear that. Ooh, looks like we're going to have a Gremlins 3, which I fucking love the Gremlins, man. Fucking. It's about time. Oh, yeah, it to is. The trilogy. It is definitely about time because, I mean, everything from from the first one on, I mean, they're, they're just great movies. They're a little scary. They're a little funny. They, they have a little bit of everything for everybody. And that's, that's what I would really love to see gremlins 3 once that that happens alice through the looking glass apparently sucks i've seen nothing but complaints and they they they're bombing at the box office right now they're bombing hard which i find very funny because anybody that's gone to see it that i know of has has told me good reviews they're like oh my god it's so great but i heard that it's a lot of the same thing as the first movie yeah and they've added so much extra crap that don't even take place in the multiple book series that it's just like 
It's about the Mad Hatter being sick and, like, needing help and all this other shit. It's like, oh, of course, you need more Johnny Depp in it. Fucking wife beater Johnny Depp. Right, and here's what I... <laughs> See, I, I like the Alice in Wonderland movie, but I didn't like it because it's almost like they made it a sequel before making the pre the the original movie. They're she like, shouldn't oh. have fought the dragon until Through the Looking Glass because it doesn't happen until in, Through the Looking Glass in the books. Right, and not only that, but they're like, oh yeah, Alice, you've been here before. That The first movie was Through the Looking Glass. Right. And they like, should have they they had like an actual... Technically, it's the second movie because it... T- they're trying to say that it takes place after the cart... Like, they're trying to fucking have the cartoon canon with the live action. And it just doesn't make fucking lick of sense. But they won't have the fucking cartoons as canon for... Anything else. Right. What? That makes no fucking yep. sense. Disney, come on, man. That's why they were like, yeah, you've been here before. We've had all these adventures. You've already met these people. No. No, you no, haven't. Like, you this haven't. is... Like, yeah, this is a up. different universe. Like, don't... I don't this understand. is Disney live action, not Disney animated. Right, and Disney, you won't allow that for anything else. Why did you think it was going to work for this? I it, That makes no fucking sense. Let's see. Uh... Friday the 13th is going to have a new origin story. Um, it's going to explain how he can get shot, blown up, killed, and come back. And some oh, new information okay. added is they're going to actually show Jason's father. Which could be the main reason why he is fucking supernaturally evil. Right. Which has never been seen before, and that makes me very happy to see a remake. Oh, yeah, definitely. I I love Jason X, but that was more funny than than scary. It was going towards the route of the, not the last one, or the new one coming out, the new Child's Play. But it almost went like the Bride of Chucky, Seed of Chucky route, where it was more comedy than anything. Right. I mean, it... It it was, was, okay, so it was... it wasn't that funny. It wasn't made to be a comedy, but it was just like so sh- cheesy, like Batman and Robin, that it was fucking hilarious. It was like, campy, right? Like it was. It was my favorite fucking part was where they put him in the like he's walking through the virtual ch- uh, reality chamber, and they have two naked girls come up to him to kind of distract him, and he cuts him in fucking half. It was fucking hysterical. I was dying laughing. They're screaming, and I'm just laughing my ass off. It was, it was a little. It was a little too overplayed. That's that's what made it funny. But I, I love the uh, Friday the 13th uh, series. And I, I really do look forward to see, seeing and hearing some more explanations from that. Apparently, uh, the Walking Dead creator... Well, not the creator. Kirkman is, going to, is trying to open up a healthy Greek food restaurant. But the town is throwing a lawsuit on them because the theme and the name have dead in it. And it's just unappealing to the eye and the taste buds to be eating in a restaurant with zombies and blood and gore, and it's called The Walking. That's what the lawsuit is. Uh, I mean, I can, I can I see, see it. it. I see it. Yeah. But, hey, you know, if you don't want to bring fucking sh- good people to your town, you're gonna make a bunch of money. Right, and not only that, but think about it this way: if you don't want to eat in front of zombies, don't eat there. Right. What the fuck? Right. I mean, if they got good food, order out. Go grab your food, say hi to the zombies, have your fun there, and then go home. I mean, you don't have to sit down and eat with them. Just pay tribute to fucking some Greek food. That that sounds delicious to me. Um, oh, by the way, Rogue One literally is going to end 10 minutes before episode 4. Like, that's legitimately confirmed. Now, it's not 10 days. I don't know if I said 10 days or not, but... You said 4 days before is when it starts, yeah, and then and... it ends like 10 minutes before. Yeah, there we go. 10 minutes before. I wanted to backtrack okay. real quick before we go on. Yeah, that... that uh... Tell them about the website, Luigi. The... Oh my god, so Swiss Army Man website, you actually get to play with Daniel Redcliffe's <laughs> dead fucking body. And it's entertaining as fuck. I haven't been on. Have you been on to like yes, play with it? it's so oh my fucking god. fun. Is it like a mini game? It's kind of him thing? just on there. You could touch his dick, his feet, and he does like fifty different things. That's fucking awesome. It's it's amazing. I can't wait to see that movie. It's got to be so fucking hilarious. The movie, we're gonna do a giant review. It's gonna be fucking. Great. Oh great! We we're seeing that day one, dude. Yeah, we're doing a gassy live review right after we see the movie. Right, we're it's gonna, gonna be great. Right, we're either gonna tell you how shitty it was or how hysterical and great it was. I mean, it can. This movie can only go one of two ways, and that's how most of these movies go. So, um, 
the Hemlock Grove star Bill Skazgard. Ooh, that one, that one stinks a little bit. The, the Hemlock Grove star Bill Skazgard, whatever the fuck, is Pennywise. It's official in the Stephen King's It official oh, feature yes. movie film. Because Fucking people keep great. calling it a remake. Not necessarily true because, motherfucker, that movie that you're terrified of with the original Pennywise of Tim Curry, that was a TV two-part special. That wasn't in the cinematic. Right. This is the first time it's going to theaters. Right, and I'm excited to see it. I mean, I'm it's not... it's going to be strict horror. Right. And I'm it not... was already scary to begin with. I'm not excited for the ending because I know the ending and I'm, I'm terrified. The giant spire creature. <laughs> right, I can't. It's behind you. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> God damn it. But, uh, yeah, man. I, itsy bitsy spider. I will Took stab you. finger in an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Out came the poop and washed up all the... Okay, anyway. So, um, also... Zootopia hit the one billion mark yesterday. With how much money it's made, so it's only duh that a sequel is right. coming out. That doesn't surprise me at all because it it wasn't that bad of a, a kids movie. I saw it like day one when it came out, and I watched it nine times today because my daughter had I had to go at five a.m. this morning to get the movie for her, and we've it's probably playing for the eleventh time now, and I just can't Most watch likely. it anymore. But it's it's fucking good. Yeah, it's so a good movie. Just you can't. Yeah. Yeah, you just can't sit down and watch a movie over and over and it's over again. It's proof that Disney can still make good movies without the help of Pixar. Oh, yes. Big time. Big time. I, I just saw our last topic on here. So there's two... There's two more? Three more. Three more. Three more. Um, Let's see here. You go on with the next one if you... People are pissed that Hermione is black in the stage play of The Cursed Child. They're throwing racial slurs out and everything and... I mean, technically, there was one time where it was proven in the books that Hermione was white. But who gives a shit? Right, it's... 2016, and people are... Use your fucking imagination, assholes. I mean, like, god why, damn it, that's like, why you why were born is, with one. Why is Ron fucking ginger and white still, but you have to make Hermione black because now her chi- their child's black? Who fucking cares? You it... shouldn't care about color. You should care if they can fucking act or not. Right, that's, that's, that's what... That's it. The... Right. <laughs> Because the book's coming out. You can read the book and imagine whoever the fuck you want. Just fucking deal with it. I mean, we're going to have different... Uh, we're going to have different, like, you know... Um, actors and actresses play all kinds of stuff. Different races. It, it just fucking grow a pair and deal with it. Um, the other thing that we wanted to talk about is the new Power Ranger pop figures are coming out. And we're not talking about the super rare, hard to find pink and red and then they even fucking harder to find green and white right we're talking about the new movie pops oh yeah definitely i can't wait because they're gonna make metallic versions of these and we're definitely going out and like finding them and oh, purchasing yeah. them day one because i guarantee you it's day one release they're gonna be fucking sold yep. out as shit and there is a it's confirmed that there's gonna be a metallic blue at gamestop and other places but there's gonna. There's, I think they were gonna do metallic there, blue and red, and then I think Target's gonna have their exclusives. And here's the thing: there is a mystery color that they're not announcing that's gonna be metallic. Which it's gotta be the Green Ranger. And like with you seeing Rita's costume and all this other stuff, it's leaning. Watch towards. them fucking make it Goldar. Watch it just be fucking Rita. Yeah, fucking, like a metallic like a Rita. Metallic Rita. Or because Zed's not in this nope. one, right? Nope. Yeah, so they can't make him a talent. Even though Zed. they said that he, he wants to make up to eight films, I'm sure right. we'll see a new Zed. But like eventually, but yeah, it's. We never, I never thought about that. What if it's just Rita, like right? another color? Yeah, fuck you. No, it's not. It's gonna be Rita. Right. Because I, I, I think the first movie is gonna end with Tommy being introduced. Um. Well, they they did show her with the Green Morpher and daggers, so I don't think he's just going to be introduced. I think they're going to fight him a little I bit. Know, I remember when I when I brought that up, the, they have the picture, but I think she's using it in this movie for evil purposes, and she's just not strong enough to beat the Rangers. So I think, but I'm why sure they'll show Tommy about halfway through the movie. But the Green Ranger is not going to be the lead villain of the first one. It's going to be Goldar no. and Rita. Right, right. It's going to be Goldar and Rita. But I, th- I think that maybe it's going to start the Green with power. So this way we can start it up, and that's going to be the entire second movie is the Green but with you gotta, Evil. Remember, they they also they have to do it in a way where if it doesn't make it as much money, 
and they never make a sequel, it could still be okay. I'm thinking, because they're going to do it, post-credits will be Tommy being fucking attacked. Or, yeah, and I think he'll beat him maybe getting attacked but i don't understand why she's got to have the green power coin that that would mean that she'd be morphing into the green ranger so are we still going to see just the using, costume because you could just use the power especially i got the the first issue of Mighty War power rangers pink the comic um kimberly in the comic kimberly is out you know fucking doing the olympics thing and with her parents and everything she actually fucking contacts zordon because she still has a communicator in the comics, which is can it's, it's canon apparently, it's stuff you haven't seen from the show. She becomes a hype. She still has the pink energy, even though, see, when Jason, Trini, and Zach transferred their powers to Rocky, Aisha, and Adam, they actually used the sword to transfer everything. When Kimberly gave Kath the power coin. She just, it, it wasn't like a fit, like it was official, but Kimberly still has the pink power coin energy in her. And in the comic, she uses that. She transforms, but it's not 100%. It doesn't 100% look like a Power Ranger. There's like black in the costume and stuff. Okay. So what I'm thinking is Rita, since she's not good, well, just uses the power of Just the... uses the power of the coin. Okay. Well, it all depends on how Saban, Saban's going to do that. Or, he... or we don't even know. Mm. That image could be from. The very end of the movie could be Rita, like a post credit scene. That could be Rita fucking pulls that out. Like if Goldar right. could beat them, I have other ways. And that's what right. it could lead to, you know, we, we, are, we met Tommy. We know what's going right. to happen. And then she just pulls it out. It's like a surprise type thing. Because like surprise, I got her something. With the dagger and everything, that was taken down. Which means they don't want people singing that, which makes me believe, ah. Right, that might be a post credit or it could happen in the last 10 minutes of the movie. Right. She's just like, hey, I've got a second surprise for these Rangers. Right. Here, here's Tommy. I just don't see foresee a first movie ending on a cliffhanger. Like where they're getting decimated and Tommy I can see Green Saban Ranger. pulling some fucking stupid shit like that. I can see it happening I don't see all day. a studio. I don't even see Lionsgate going like, no. Because that's just like... Too much for one film, in a sense. Because, like, every film is supposed to have one primary villain. Right, but I'm just saying, shit. like, is it in order just to set up this, the next film. That's why I think it'll be more like a... post credits kind of a cliffhanger right. thing. Which, that, that does make the most sense or to me. Or it'll show Rita taking it still, and then the Rangers celebrate, or, and like, maybe they meet Tommy at the very end of the movie. But they're... Cel so, like, I think the movie's gonna end. Them celebrating beating Goldar... Rita is like, okay, I got something else for him. Pulls out the green shit like a surprise. And at that very moment, it cuts back to them at the juice bar. and may, Or maybe it's just a little tournament thing Jason's in. And it cuts back to it. And then that's when Tommy is introduced. And they go to uh, start their fight. Right. And then that's the that's how the movie ends. Right. Right. That, that could be. We, this is we fun. just don't know. Like, yeah. And then, lastly, I mean, that that's it. But I was going to say, you know, there's only ten more days. Well, nine more days as of this podcast being out. Finding Nemo, or fucking Finding Dory comes out. And again, congratulations to Hayden Rollins. He uh, played the young me in Whom I Fear. He's now the new voice of Nemo. So congratulations again, man, uh, to you and your family. I cannot wait to watch Finding Dory. And Yes. That is, it's a big. This was a big ass podcast. We got a sponsor. We had a current oh, yeah. convention, and, but that's it, man. Yeah, this this one ran for a good hour, man. Yeah, this is a yeah, long this, ass episode. Yeah, and uh, thank you again to our fans for listening in oh, every 100%. every week. Um, I'm actually excited for the new Dory film, but um, I remember Ellen DeGeneres posted up a tweet when she found out that she was going to be the one missing. She's like, "Wait, so I'm the one that's missing? So I won't have many parts in this? Somebody call my lawyer." Well, she's the main character. What right. it is is she remembers her family. So it's her, Marlon, and Nemo trying to find her family. Oh, so that's so it's not finding Dory in the sense of they're physically looking yeah, for no. Dory. It's Dory finding herself and finding her family. Oh, uh, so nice play on words, Disney. I have yeah, to give you a little bit of credit one. on that one. So you know that there's only good play on words when Pixar's involved. Yes, because Disney Pixar is superior to just Disney. Right. Even though I love, I love me some Wreck-It Ralph, but you and I have talked oh, about yes. the flaws in that movie. Yeah, we have talked about the flaws because Disney always has some kind of flaw, and so does Pixar, and that's just because you know that's the way they are. But we got to love them the way they are. 
And man, that that does that wraps up this nice, beautiful fucking episode here. Uh, again, thank you to our sponsor, Mr. Darren Marler of Marler House. Uh, he's also our intro guy. Everything. This has been Randy Lee Beasley and Luigi Bonanno. And uh, take it away, Mr. Sponsor, <coughs> Darren Marlin. <laughs> You've been listening to uh, uh, Gassy Radio.